Okay, here we go. Take two. Hope for today. No one on reading. December 22nd. I turned my back on religion many years before my first Al-Anon meeting. So when the meeting ended with a closing prayer, I wondered how I could pray without feeling false. I closed my eyes and bowed my head, but I didn't say the prayer. I feared someone would tap me on the shoulder and tell me to say the prayer. The prayer ended and no one chastised me. Instead, I was given literature and encouraged to return. Although I didn't know it when I first walked through Al-Anon's doors, the words must and should nearly ruined my relationship with my daughter and with my spouse. I had no awareness of the role that iron rules played in my life. My chattering mental voice applied these rules to myself and in turn, I applied them to everyone else. Life was not comfortable because I was constantly on guard. Al-Anon helped me see that right and wrong were not the issues. The important issues were maintaining my serenity, making contact with my higher power, and keeping my mouth shut about other people's business. I used to think of myself as responsible, disciplined adult. Yet the love and support of my fellow Al-Anon members showed me that my rigidity was a wall that hid my fear. Acceptance of my self-doubts enabled me to start turning away from the musts and shoulds. Now I'm gentler with myself and others. Years after my first meeting, I stand gratefully in the circle and choose to say the closing prayer. Thought for the day. There are no shoulds in Al-Anon. The program only suggests I practice the steps, traditions, concepts of service and slogans to the best of my ability. There's a quote from As We Understood, page 29, and that is, in addition to offering healing for a hurt spirit, the fellowship offers empathy and choice. Okay, that's wonderful, wonderful to read and to reflect on that reading. Uh, this year is 2020, December 22nd. And uh, I came into Allen on a year ago in November, as I re recollect. And um, I was feeling pretty down. Uh, and my faith in a higher power, God, um, wasn't working for me because I kept praying for things that um, just to alleviate my pain, only if I would have this, then that would be okay. And um, they never really worked. Sometimes they would work out, but I would still be in this place where I was waiting for the other shoe to drop. Like, okay, well, something's gonna happen bad, you know, like, I, I had an attitude where, <clears throat> and I still, that's why I keep working through my program and reading this, uh, the different pages and showing up for meetings and talking to others in my fellowship and having a sponsor per se. And um, so that I can reflect rather than react with with the things that come with living life on life's terms. And that means that there's gonna be ups and downs. There's gonna be uh, just how life is. It just, uh, 
for me. And that's my hello. And I, I was a, I was always curious what, like I'm responsible, I'm disciplined, and um, and I didn't realize how many musts and shoulds that I threw out there for my family and my spouse and my friends. And um, now I realize how much I do that within myself and that that must have been such an overpowering um, blind spot for me because I was so consumed with what I was saying to myself and what uh, that chattering mental voice that they explain in this, of those iron rules. And um, I applied them to everyone else, knowingly or unknowingly. And now I can pause and see my thoughts and not uh, react as often. And um, I'm really grateful for that. So that's that particular reading. And I'm gonna read another one and that's Courage to Change for the same date, December 22nd. And it's on page 357. So here we go. We often concentrate on learning to apply the Al-Anon principles only to a particular family situation. There are, however, many simple ways in which we can go. So let me start again. We often concentrate on learning to apply the Al-Anon principles only to a particular family situation. There are, however, many simple ways in which we can keep the Al-Anon program with us wherever we go. Some of us carry Al-Anon literature in a lunchbox, pocket, or purse so that we can touch base with the wisdom of the program the minute we lose perspective. Before a difficult situation escalates, we might excuse ourselves and step outside for a moment of privacy. Whether we find ourselves in a shopping center, an office, or a hospital, there will almost always be a restroom available where we can collect ourselves. The telephone numbers of several Al-Anon members and plenty of change for a payphone can be lifesavers. Many of us always keep an Al-Anon meeting list handy. And prayer is available anytime, any place. It is unacceptable to outside eyes, but it bears a seed of transformation that can bring the most unmanageable situation into perspective. And I have like a little bookmark that I carry with me. Today's reminder, it is good to know about the tools of Al-Anon of the al program, but it is better to put them to use. Today, I will remember that the program is available to me at any time of the day or night. And the quote from a book called In All Our Affairs is, the quality of our lives continue to improve as we apply the al program, not only to crisis situations, but to our everyday lives. And I will share on that. And um, change for the payphone. Well, you can find a payphone anywhere right now. Um, or change for that matter. <laughs> no, it's hard enough. It was hard enough before and right now it may be difficult. So that's a a dated um, excerpt in there, but I like it. It's very um, um, nostalgic. And, um, but I do carry this, hi honey, my kitty. 
So I have this uh, Alan on, uh, it says just for tonight. And it says a few things like just for tonight, I will release my loved ones to my higher powers care. I will free myself from trying to do the impossible, changing the actions, attitudes, or life of anyone other than myself. And um, just for tonight, I will set aside anger, judgment, resentment, envy, and hurt feelings. I will ask my higher power to bless those whose actions I feel troubled by and to change my attitude to one of love, acceptance, and compassion. So it has many of these, several of them, and I try to do, read this, it really gives me that pause, that um, uh, pray, pray and use step 11. So once, we, once I talk about the steps a bit. Um, so that was, that was uh, two readings from the Al-Anon literature. And I hope that this will benefit you in some way, um, as it has for myself. So I will close with the serenity prayer and if you'd like to join me with that please do and let's start with a moment of silence and um, set our intentions close the eyes down god Grant us the serenity to accept the things we cannot change, the courage to change the things we can, and wisdom to know the difference. Amen. And God is, uh, can be many things, like your higher power, um, have um, some acronyms for God, like Good orderly direction. Another acronym that I like is guide of destiny. And one that's a little bit more severe is grow or die. <laughs> you like that one? My cat's in here loving me. And higher power. Um, uh, uh, you know, using, using the acronyms helps. And um, for those including myself, that um, have some questions about what that, you know, using, using, um, using the word God um, can be triggering for some people and also um, uh, using pronouns like he or him. I was using things like um, he is a higher energy or his heightened internal spirit and him, higher internal mind, and um, or you can use she, her, and hers, and um, the S can mean soul, supreme spirit, and the R uh, can mean like reaches, realm, things like that. So using those pronouns as acronyms uh, or not, you know, use uh, whatever. Um, the God of your understanding, right? Just as long as it's not you, you know, is that what they say? It's a, it's a harmony, it's something that, uh, you know, so that you can um, have that, that uh, heightened spirit of self, right? So with that, I will close. And I will see you tomorrow. Much love. Thank you for joining me with this.